Next, let's plot the pressure contours as part of post-processing. I will turn off the velocity magnitude contours, go back to the contour icon here, and call the object pressure contours, and say OK. Location again is symmetry one, pressure is a variable, and let's get greedy and also want 101 contours and say apply. And you see the variation of the pressure contours. And let's see if this meets our expectations. Okay. If I come to the leading edge, I see that I get relatively high pressures here. Now, boundary layer theory breaks down over here. Um, and the, the, the fluent solution is valid in the leading edge, but you get, you know, as we saw, very rapid boundary layer development over here. So we'd have to refine the mesh here and push this far field one boundary to the left to get an accurate prediction here. Away from that region, let's say, you know, so over here, we see that the pressure is almost, so the gauge pressure is almost zero. And so as I go across the boundary layer, something like that, um, since the pressure is not varying very much, dp dy is, uh, is very close to zero, is what we expect. And that matches with our expectations from boundary layer theory. If I look at the, the range of pressure, I should, or the gauge pressure, I should compare it to the free stream dynamic pressure, which is half rho u infinity squared, uh, which is just 0.5, uh, because rho is one and u infinity is one, and this has units of pascals. So relative to that, uh, you can see the blue regions are, uh, you know, the, the pressure, the gauge pressure variation is, is very low, which meets with our expectations from boundary layer theory. And we can check if the boundary condition on the pressure is satisfied and it looks like the gauge pressure at this far field three boundary is, um, is uh, zero. So it ma matches with our boundary condition. Now the pressure here is the gauge pressure here, especially as you get closer to the plate, deviates uh, from zero, uh, even though we give an initial guess of, of zero because that's uh, that doesn't have a pressure boundary condition, that has a velocity boundary condition. And I can also plot the pressure and velocity side by side. I like to do that and contrast uh, the two plots. So I'll go here and I'll say, give me two view panes. And in the second one, so I'll click on the second one and I'll say, um, don't synchronize visibility. I want to see different things in the different panes, but synchronize camera. Okay, so I'll get the same view in both. I'll click on Z in both, and then I will maybe zoom out like that. I can pan, place it next to each other, and then I'll go to this pane, and there, instead of uh, pressure, I will turn on velocity. And, and so you can see, you know, the velocity and pressure side by side, and you can see that the boundary layer doesn't have much effect on the, the pressure, whereas it has a big effect on the velocity where the velocity is going from zero to one. So that's a good contrast between what the boundary layer is doing between pressure and velocity. And that's really the uh, a key insight that Prantl had in developing boundary layer theory. I'll go back to a single pane and I'll say file save project.